That's unreal. That's that's the buck that I've been after. He was when I first saw him. It looked like he was pinned down, and I thought they were locked up. But they uh, eventually got untangled and they fell down the creek. But it was right in front of. I mean, 40 yards. I'm just on the other side of the creek, hiding against a bank. Obviously, they weren't uh, too aware of what was going on around them in a, in a fight like that, but crazy. I didn't expect to even see that deer in this part of the farm, let alone see him like that. Just unreal. Well, we finally got some nice weather here in Iowa. It's been a cold and windy spring, and we got a nice day so Gavin and I are spending a few hours out of the office and uh, we're actually in a spot kind of reliving uh, one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in the woods and that's the the fight of the deer I called George Brett way back in 2014 I was coming in walking in this creek when I filmed it it's always cool to come to these spots and just kind of relive those those really cool experiences cool moments that you have in the woods I was chasing that deer pretty hard that year and actually decided to come hunt here that afternoon to get away, take a break from him, from trying to find him. Didn't expect him to be at this end. Uh, so I was very shocked, one, to film a fight like that, but two, that is the deer that I've been targeting all season. Uh, but it's just kind of cool looking at this spot. I think I, I dropped in down the creek back here and I can already recognize some of the landmarks if you want to call it that from in the clip some of these logs that were sticking out kind of where they tumbled down the creek i know i had to be right in here somewhere when i started filming the fight and one thing that's kind of cool is i, I was self-filming that night obviously and had the main camera in my pack and when i first saw i didn't see the bucks fighting or the bucks locked up i had seen a small buck coming down the back and he was acting pretty funny so i decided to stop and get my camera out of the bag and just film him and i filmed him coming down the down the creek and he jumped down and i kind of knew something was going on at that point and that's when the bucks came into frame so i was somewhere right in this spot and uh because i just kind of replaying the angle i had in my head you know it's amazing when i first saw the two bucks locked up george brett was actually pinned on his back and they weren't really moving at that point and then they flip and and george it's crazy that it didn't just break his neck right there but he flips end over end i mean his feet were straight up in the air and he flips over and they flip about halfway down the bank at first and at that point i think they're kind of locked they're locked together obviously but i think they're also kind of tangled on the log because they kind of tangle a little bit there and then you hear the log snap and that's when they fall the rest of the way into the water and um, they go at it what's kind of cool when they first get in the water too just to show how intense the fight was i don't know how long they had been locked up previously but up until that moment that they fall in the water the whole time i'm filming they are they're tangled they're locked together it's not like they're going back and forth they are locked and, and as tied up as you can be and they split when they hit the water but they go right back in at it no hesitation uh, just shows you the intensity i mean they could have been locked up for a long time and you'd almost expect them to when they break free to you know, kind of separate a little bit but there's not much hesitation at all to start that fight again and i remember this spot because probably halfway through the clip I'm, they start to work their way around the corner a little bit and i remember sliding down this bank like five or six feet just so i can get a better angle I knew it was something that I, it was a once in a lifetime filming experience and I wanted to make sure I captured it. So you can see the camera go crazy in the middle of the clip as I'm trying to switch angles. So they were right in the water right here somewhere, right along this little stretch and kind of looking back to where I was standing filming from. It was probably, I don't know, 70 yards maybe, if my memory serves me right. And, you know, they battled for a long time, and I just remember how intense the experience was just watching it. It was truly a surreal experience, uh, watching that intensity. And uh, I've seen some decent fights over the years, but nothing that compares to that, and on top of it being a buck that I was after. So you can hear the, the heavy breathing and everything in the clip that kind of exemplifies that. But I remember, too, after the fight, 
after George Brett won, he came up. I assume he had a hot dough up here somewhere, which initiated the fight. And he, you could tell he was working hard to try to find her back. But at, in the process of that, he came all the way up to me, almost all the way up to me, in bow range for sure, uh, just on the other side of the creek before he turned around and just kept scent trailing um, that doe that he was likely with. And uh, I sat there for a little bit and kind of collected my thoughts and just processed what happened, decided to let him work off a little bit because like I said, I was on my way to hunt down in here. So then I got by, walked down the creek uh, to a stand that was around the corner, uh, hoping to obviously encounter him later that evening. So you can see the stand here that I went to hunt that evening after I kind of let the deer work off and I continued my walk in the creek. And it, I remember it was less than an hour after filming the fight, I, I was in the stand and the buck that lost the fight was here in front of me in bow range. He was working these little blowdowns and raking on them and you could still he, tell he was still pretty fired up. Um, I saw him a couple times that evening, but unfortunately didn't see George Brett at all the rest of the night. And, uh, you know, it's not really, it's not just the the fight in that afternoon that was so memorable. It was the entire chase for that buck that was so memorable. That's really where the fire was lit for me on chasing individual bucks. Um, that was probably the most I had focused on one single deer and put everything I had into trying to pattern him, trying to learn his personality, um, where he spent time, just the entire experience of chasing a single deer. And that's really where it got confirmed for me that that's where my passion lies within bow hunting. And so f from that, I took a lot of things away. Uh, but I, I remember the rest of the season playing cat and mouse with them. It was a tough deer to hunt. There's a lot of uh, features of this property that made it hard to pattern. The deer could kind of go anywhere, especially in the area that he tend to core up in um, at the other end. And I got close a couple times, just uh, never close enough. And then the following year, as most of you guys know, he, he really blew up. He was a, a giant 10 that year in 2015. And I didn't have had one single encounter actually a couple hundred yards back unfortunately no footage he was running across this ridge chasing a doe again i was on my way in to hunt down this bottom but uh never actually filmed him that year never had any encounters on film and uh like most of you guys know i found him the following shed season and have no idea what happened to him how he died found him right up the hill here um, like I said, it's just such a cool chase, and it's really where I got my start as far as targeting individual deer and really got an appreciation appreciation for how different they are, the unique personalities. Uh, you can't always take what you learn from one deer and apply it to another because they all act a little bit different. So it's always cool to relive those moments. It's crazy to think it's been almost eight years since I filmed that, um, but just obviously a memory I won't forget and cool to look back on. I've gotten a lot of questions and requests on my thoughts and what the what the Tour V is and uh, I promised I'd do a full review on it but I wanted a chance to really put it through the ringer and uh, get a lot of use out of it and myself and a few of the other guys have been running them now for close to five months uh, maybe a little bit more. I got it with just a week or two left in the hunting season so I got to use it for access but this machine you know they, they call it Tour V it stands for the ultimate off-road electric vehicle has exceeded my expectations and it's a game changer especially when it comes to access and hunting access you know of course you have ATVs and UTVs you know we use our Kubotas a lot for work and projects on the farm or hauling people or hauling equipment you know that's not where this one stands out this one really stands out for quiet and clean hunting access and that's the most exciting thing to me and probably if i was to recommend it to to anybody for one particular reason it'd be because it's a game changer in access i've already started to think about 
what new access possibilities I have. It's going to create new options. It's going to make my existing options more effective, not having to leave that ground scent. And you know, with the, the form factor of it pretty much makes it accessible almost anywhere you can walk, you can take this thing. It's small, it's quiet, it's all electric. It's got unbelievable power and torque for an electric vehicle. It's operated by two 60 volt lithium ion batteries and I haven't had any issues so far. The battery lasts a long time. It's got a low, medium, high, but it's got so much torque and power in low, I rarely take it out of low. I mean, this thing truly flies and it's, it's impressive. If you haven't driven an electric vehicle, whether it be an e-bike or something like this, uh, those electric vehicles are, are impressive and just so quiet. I mean, driving up on game, driving past game. And that's one thing. I'm a big believer that when it comes to walking in, especially like in the dark or even in the daylight, a person on foot is likely to spook a deer as opposed to a vehicle. A lot of times a vehicle, even something like this, a personal vehicle, you'll be able to cruise right by a deer that's bedded or a deer that's you know, off in the woods or something. Whereas if you're on foot, they're likely not gonna stick around. Sometimes they do, but more often than not, they're gonna bust out of there. And again, that's more power to how much of a game changer this is from an access standpoint. A few of the other features, obviously the you can see the front and the rear baskets. It makes it really nice for carrying gear. You can put a set of these little Colpin grips on it uh, to carry your bow or your gun. I'm going to switch that to the back side. I don't, I don't love using my bow as a uh, brush card, but it's nice having that so you're not taking up room somewhere else or having to sling the bow on your back or anything. It's got a little headlamp here and they, they are making changes. So everything you see is made in the USA and these guys are very, very good guys, very responsive to feedback. They're working on new fender design that's going to quiet it up a little bit. Right now this plastic is a little noisy. They're working on more of a rubber design to quiet that down. Um, I know they're working on some green covers, uh, green lenses for the light here. But overall, very, very well made. That's one of the first things I noticed when I got it was just how rock solid it was. I mean, it looks like an, like an American made product, what you'd expect from that. It's also small enough that it can fit in the, in the bed of a truck. I've loaded this in and out by myself multiple times. I've done it by hand where you take the front end, lift it up on the tailgate, then walk around and put the back end. I've since grabbed a, a set of ramps just to make it a little bit easier, but that's another benefit, not having to trailer it. You have this vehicle you can get around on and you don't have to pull a trailer or anything if you, you know, have space in your truck bed. I can actually fit two of these in the bed of my truck. One other thing I wanted to share with you guys is this is another company that allows us to pass our discount on to you. So if you are interested, uh, make sure you use the code MWPRO, all caps, and uh, we'll put it in the description. But that'll get you 15% off this unit, which on a high dollar item like this, that's almost a couple thousand dollars. So we appreciate Tour V sharing that, that we can pass it on to you guys. So many uses for this thing. We've used it for everything from turkey hunting to shed hunting to prescribed burns, you know, getting around different places. But the thing that makes it worth it in my mind is the access to and from your stand. It's gonna, I already know of options that's gonna open up for me and it's gonna make my existing options more clean. Um, and that's gonna result in more opportunities at deer. So that, that makes it worth it in my eyes. If you guys have questions or have interest, feel free to reach out to myself or the guys at Tour V. You know, I'd be happy to help, uh, but I just wanted to, to give you guys a review. I know I've been getting requests for it, and it's a pretty awesome machine. That's it for this week's show. We appreciate you joining as always. We'll see you next week.